Hello, I'm Alex Dickens from Team 2654E Echo, and I'm going to quickly go over how we format our notebook this year. So to start out, I'm going to talk about the headers and footers here in our notebook. We have these headers and footers on the document you'll see here, and this is that sidebar that you see on the document. This is pretty unique in Google Docs. We haven't really seen many other teams using this. What this allows us to do with this image here that we have set to behind the text, it allows us to put this little colored piece to indicate which section you're in. So you'll see as you change from the like table of contents area to farther down like this introduction to the game analysis, the color changes there. That's just one of the things we use to indicate where we are in the robots and the design, design cycle there. Next, next in our table of contents, we have these headings here. In the top level, we have the heading one or the notebook introduction, the heading two in the accountability or something like the accountability each of the entries here. So going through how we do this is we set these to a heading one here, and we can actually change the formatting there. So all of our heading ones look like this, and all of our headings two look like this. And you'll get, if I go down here, we have all of our heading threes look like this. And by having these consistent formatting, it allows our notebook to look extremely consistent throughout the year, which is really helpful to make your notebook look professional and well done. Additionally, these headings allow the notebook to be put into this table of contents with the links here. So if you look at these hyperlinks, you can go to almost any part of the notebook just like that. And we also link just back to the table of contents right here in the footer there. So now how do we implement this in the example sheet that I have? Here I have this uh, document that I made for the explanation video here. I'm gonna put in a header here. So I'll do, sorry, heading. So I have this heading one and I'm going to give it the heading one style. But let's say I want the heading one to be centered and a little bit bigger, right? So say that's the new formatting we want. I can go to heading one and then press update heading one to match. And what this does is actually makes all heading, all heading one, just like that, all the same size. So let's say I'll name this one heading one and I'll just do like, I'll do heading number one just to, make it look different from heading one here and indicate that it's still number one. But then let's say I wanted to make this smaller. So I'll make this like 32 and then I press update heading one to match. You'll see that they all match. So this is very helpful when you want to keep your note formatting consistent throughout the notebook because it means that every single heading you change will have the same formatting. However, something to note with this is the flip side of that is that when you change one thing, let's say your formatting is all set up. so. That like it barely fits in the page like this one, which fit like makes the notebook look nice. If you change the size of this heading, it'll mess up all your pages. And when you have 407 pages and some might go over the borders, you might have to go through and check every single page to make sure everything still lines up. Next, I'm going to talk about page breaks. So you'll see in our notebook here that every single page, every single entry starts on a new page. This is something that I would re totally recommend doing. It just makes your notebook so much easier to look through especially when they're trying to look for uh, these entries and they have very consistent style, just putting them all on a new page, top of the page, makes it extremely easy for your judges to look through your notebook. So to do this, we take heavy advantage of the page breaks. So you'll see there, I did command enter, but you can also do insert page break, which is right there. And if you do that, you'll see that this is on a new page now, and this is almost blank space. So you can put, oops, you can put, anything in this area then, so you can type, 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 and you can put everything in between there, and that'll let you to keep your formatting really nice in your documents. Next, I'll go over the table of contents. So to do the table of contents, set that up in Google Docs, you have to do insert table of contents, and you'll see that it's inserted there. You can refresh it to update it, but I'm gonna actually talk about some more options here. So if you press the three dots, more options, you'll get a menu over here that you can use to edit stuff in your document. So let's say I actually make this to goal or something like that. This is where I keep the goal. This isn't exactly what we did in our notebook, but you'll see what it does to the table of contents. So you'll refresh it and you'll see the goal under each of them. And maybe you only want the top level headings to show there. So you can customize this in your document by showing which headings appear. You could even do it so that there's a header, heading three, not header, heading, heading three here that, is of a different thing. It's more just like a subtitle or something like that, which is actually something in Google Docs specifically for subtitles. And that's what we use in our notebook, this subtitle, 
which doesn't show up in the table of contents. But if you put that in and refresh this, you'll actually see that heading three appears under there. Let's say you want to show this or this, you can change that in this table of contents. And you can show like tab leader and you can show page numbers and stuff like that in your document. Okay, next one thing to note in Google Docs is it's pretty powerful word processing tool really. And it has a whole bunch of features to make your documents look nice. One of those features that's actually hard to almost get a grasp on initially is this spacing tool. So you can change the spacing in between lines. So where this will be, if you have a big block of text, like let's say in our notebook, we have this paragraph and I'm gonna mess this up real quick, but let's say we want double spacing. Pretty much everyone knows what that looks like, but you can change up this spacing to do different things in your notebook. Usually I keep it about 0.15, but you can also add a space before the paragraph, add a space after the paragraph and stuff like that. Just make your spacing a little more aesthetic and that allows you to set, set up stuff so that like this this is before we really figured out to do proper page spacing you'll see we put a full new line there or if i set it up now i'd actually put no new line in between there and add a space before the paragraph just because it, it's a more comfortable size space in between there so that's just something you'll learn as you go through and continue working in your document more so to print our document we go to this control p print menu this print menu will bring up this document and actually use this as opposed to the file download PDF because the PDF works great for documents less than like a hundred pages, but, and that'll work for like your first competition maybe, but as you get to bigger and bigger notebooks, you're gonna have to do this print and you're gonna want to do this print specifically in a Chrome or Chromium based browser or these, I found that these links to the internal headings get broken. So just be careful of that and be aware of that. If you export a document, please make sure you check it before you actually submit it to the judges. And I'll go over how we submit that in a second too. And then one last thing, I guess, before I go over to the, how we submit it, I'm going to talk about Excaladraw. Excaladraw here is how we set up all the figures in our notebook. This is one that I use to represent how we do the distance sensor time of flight sensing, but by just very thoroughly going through and using learning how to use these tools, you can make some really elegant drawings in your notebook. So not th that figure, but a lot of the figures later in our notebook, and I'll actually jump to one of those where we go here. Uh, let's see. Here, here's an example of something we made in Google Docs, which was kind of a pain to do that we could now more easily do with the Excaladraw tool, such as, <laughs> it's taking me a second. There, here, here's some of the illustrations we made in Excaladraw, like this one, this one. And I found that it makes some really elegant looking drawings very, very easily and quickly. Okay, and then last here, I wanted to quickly talk about how we upload our notebook for the judges to see. This is how we do it. I know there's probably some better methods, but we use this site called Netlify. This, what this allows us to do is host the file as a web server. So this is what the hosted document looks like. And I wanna talk about how it's nice. So what this means is that when the judges fully load the notebook, it's truly fully loaded into the browser. So you can see, we I can actually skip down using at the end of this table of contents here to a page way down here and it fluidly loads. Might take a little bit of time, but as you can see, it's already loaded down here and already shows everything that the judges might want to see. And it does the same when you link back to here. And that's something that I really don't get with the Google Drive, like PDF viewer. And another thing to note here is that all these table of contents links work where I found some other PDF viewers don't quite work, but it seems like this method is pretty reliable at having everything work for the judges. Okay, so to do this, I go to Netlify and I create a new project. I'll deploy manually and I create a zip file and I'll, I will usually just drag it up and it'll automatically basically do everything for me, tell me where the link is and it's pretty self-explanatory from there. But I'll talk about how this file structure is made. So I have this notebook file. So this is just the entire notebook that we put into here. I name it nb.pdf, just keep it simple. And I have this robust.txt file. This just makes it that Google can't find your notebook on accident and then show it to everyone. This is actually fairly important. Theoretically, if you don't have this, at some point, Google might crawl your website. And once that's done, they can actually suggest it on Google search. And then someone could theoretically search, oh, 2654E engineering notebook throughout the year. And it'll actually show up your notebook. And yeah, that's probably not great if you want, don't want your competitors to see that. So just taking the extra time to put that in is pretty helpful. And then the last most helpful file is this index.htmi file. What this file is, is a file that just loads up the PDF viewer into 
an object in the class. We don't actually use this to upload our notebook or show it to people. What we use is the, we just send them the link with like notebook.pdf appended at the end instead, because we found that works just as well as whatever this viewer was, but they both have the same experience. So if they do like somehow type in the link differently or something like that, it results in the same effect. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great time notebooking this year and good luck.